everyone welcome back to the channel and welcome to another speed build this video is going to be a little bit different from my normal speed builds because it's actually in two parts i'm going to be building my villager neighborhood and this took me several real life weeks to finish it was a massive project it takes up like a quarter of my island it's huge so i thought the only way that i'd be able to share the process of it is in two parts so the first part is going to be me basically cutting out the general shape of the build like getting all of the plots lined up and getting everything kind of like terraformed and ready to go and then the next video that i'll probably post next week will be the decoration and finally moving all the houses and getting all of the yards looking really cute and all the fun stuff basically. <laughs> also in this video I'm going to try and do the voiceover a little bit differently. I feel like I really struggle with voiceovers. I never know what to talk about so usually I just end up rambling about how much this game frustrates me. <laughs> But I'm gonna try and actually talk through like my process and like what I was actually like trying to accomplish with this build, which is a little bit tricky admittedly because I never go into these videos with a plan so I can't really say like, oh first I did this and then I did this and then I did this because I kind of just do whatever I want. <laughs> Um, and there's no real rhyme or reason to it. But I guess what I can try and do is narrate at least my thought process at that moment. Even if there's no real foresight or planning behind it, I at least can let you guys know what's going on in my brain. So what I'm doing right now is cutting out a lowered area where I want some of the houses to be kind of below others. If you watched my last villager neighborhood video, this is kind of the same area where that last villager neighborhood was. So I basically just flattened the whole thing because I knew I wanted the neighborhood to be multi-level, but not in like the tiered way that I had my last neighborhood. That was kind of like some in the front and then some higher in the back. I wanted the levels to be a little bit more organic. Like I wanted some houses to be be like in a valley or like behind the hills. I did have one picture in particular that I was very much inspired by so I will leave a link to that reddit post in the description so you guys can all check that out and be amazed. That picture honestly inspired like my entire theme of my island. <laughs> like I saw the houses in an archipelago and I was like, I need water everywhere on my island. And that kind of like prompted me to re-flatten my island again. <laughs> because before I was like, oh, I don't really like how it's going, but I don't know if I want to flatten it. Like I spent so much work, like should I finish with the direction I'm going? Should I start over? Like, what do I do? And then I saw this picture and I was like, I'm gonna flatten my island. I want an archipelago. I want water everywhere. <laughs> So I based my whole island theme off of this one picture and like how I wanted my villager neighborhood to be. So what I'm doing now is kind of laying out the plots where I want the houses to go. So up here is going to be Goose's house. This little kind of enclave is going to be Blanche's house. The little island right in front of Blanche's house is going to be Daisy's house. And then I did have a plot right there that I thought I was going to put a house, but it ended up being a little bit, it disrupted the flow of traffic too much. So I ended up just putting a little bridge there because I love a good bridge. <laughs> After I laid out the right side of the neighborhood, more or less how I wanted it, I do make some changes as you'll see later on in the video, but I started adding like a little bit of a waterfall detail because waterfalls are the best. I have a friend who is challenging herself to decorate her island without using any terraforming or any waterfalls. So I am trying to, um, <laughs> compensate on her behalf by putting waterfalls literally everywhere. <laughs> I also think that terraforming and especially putting like waterfalls and like water features on your island is a pretty easy way to fill up empty space. Like if you've got a little bit of empty space and you're not 100% sure what to put there, I feel like it's real easy to make something look real nice with just like a couple of cliffs and a waterfall and like maybe a little river. And for me, I really wanted all of my rivers to like be connected like i didn't want there to be like a river to nowhere you know what i mean like the the water just kind of comes magically out of the ground i wanted the rivers to kind of 
all connect or at least look like they connect. So for me, it was important to have like a lot of rivers and a lot of waterfalls like all over the place because, you know, it would make sense like how they were all connected. And like I said, it feels kind of like a cheaty little way to like add visual interest <laughs> to your island, especially because you don't really need a lot of furniture in those areas. You can kind of just chuck some shrubs and some flowers next to a waterfall and you're golden. You are about to witness exhibit A of why it's good to have a plan for your terraforming before you actually start terraforming, which is something that I never do. Hence why I had to move this whole path over one tile so that it lined up with the staircase on the other side of the island. This stuff frustrates me so much. And you'd think that it might make me change my behavior and start planning things out ahead of time, but no, no, I do this to myself every single time I do anything. So unfortunately I had to move my whole little waterfall situation over one tile just so that the path in the valley lined up with the path that kind of led over the hill. I wanted to have two staircases, one going up from the resident services and one going down into the valley, into the neighborhood, but they weren't lined up on the same path uh, because I neglected to plan that out ahead of time. So <laughs> I had to make some changes. Thankfully it wasn't that hard. I just kind of had to scoot everything over. And since I hadn't bought any inclines or bridges or anything like that yet, it wasn't really like a monetary loss. It was just kind of like, damn it, I did this again, really? <laughs> like I do this all the time, but it's fine. I would say we live and we learn, but we live and we don't learn and we make the same mistakes every single time we build anything. <laughs> so the next area of the neighborhood that I'm going to be working on is the area by Ketchup and Freckles's house. Freckles's? Freckles? Is that right? English is hard. <laughs> but Freckles and Ketchup are my two peppy ducks and they're hilarious and they're good fun, but they're also really annoying because they're the ones that most commonly get in my way when I'm trying to build. So it's kind of like a love-hate thing that we've got going on there. They're very cute, which is why I can't get rid of them, but oh my god, they are so annoying. <laughs> Anyway, I struggled with how I wanted to lay out their houses a little bit. So I ended up like laying down some tile and then picking it up and moving it and then laying it down again and picking it up and moving it. So I ended up cutting all of that out. So what you're seeing now is the final laying down of tile. Cause I wasn't hundred percent sure how I wanted these houses to be laid out because again, I didn't plan ahead because planning ahead is um, for losers apparently. So originally I was kind of thinking that I might want to copy the way I had their houses on my old villager neighborhood. So it was kind of like the tiered neighborhood. Freckles and Ketchup were at the top and they had their houses like right next to each other. It was very, very cute. Didn't end up having enough space for that. And then I was thinking maybe I'll put like a little waterfall in the middle of them. But then I was like, I'd have to have a bridge and the bridge is too close to the cliff. So it wouldn't place. So Anyway, I had to revise the like half plan that I like made up on the fly, but I cut all of that finagling out of the video. So you guys just get to see the nice finished product. Right now I am planning out where I want to put the staircase to connect up to the other upper level of the neighborhood over onto the left side. And I'm deciding how I want to connect all of the rivers. Like I mentioned before, I wanted all of my rivers to be connected or at least like mostly connected. I wanted this island to be like mostly water. <laughs> like I wanted rivers everywhere, lakes everywhere. Like I wanted everywhere you go on this island to be like, you are on the water. Kind of like a Venice vibe. Like the whole city is just surrounded by water. Hopefully I achieved that, but you'll have to let me know in the comments. So now I'm moving on to the houses on the left side of my island. This plot is going to be for Agnes. As you can see, she is chilling and admiring my handiwork and making sure everything is up to her standards and specifications. <laughs> and behind her house, I'm continuing to build out the river. June decided to get right in my way, which is great. Um, that's great. And also in this area, I decided I wanted to build a big sunken waterfall because I just love how they look and I didn't have enough of them on my island so I decided to build one. So here you can see I am cutting into the cliff and kind of building 
the shape of the sunken waterfall. I ended up moving it back a little bit so you can see me now like rebuilding where I want the cliff to be and taking down the stuff in the front. If you're interested in building a sunken waterfall, here's what I'd recommend. Terraform a big flat structure and then go down and cut out of it kind of like an organic shaped hole. And I feel like it doesn't really matter like what kind of shape you build as long as there's like enough space for you to like round off the corners. Like you see how like the cliff that I have on the top left only has two blocks of cliff. So I can't round off both corners, otherwise it'll disappear. But if you have three blocks of cliff sticking out in front, you can round off the two side corners and keep the middle corner so it'll kind of look like a nice spherical cliff. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. And maybe this doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me, but for me personally, I just really like having rounded corners. I feel like with the cliffs and the waterfalls, if it comes to like a sharp point, it doesn't look as natural. So I really like to have like rounded corners, rounded rivers, things that are kind of more soft and organic, unless I'm going for like kind of more structured city look like a lot of the rivers that are in the neighborhood on the right side of the island have very like straight and square rivers and that was kind of more intentional because that felt to me more like a um more of a gridded established town vibe whereas this where the sunken waterfall is a little bit more natural a little bit more organic less structured if that makes sense so that's my one tip for sunken waterfalls is to round off your corners so you have more round edges and less square edges my second tip is to leave yourself an in to the lower area of the waterfall in case you need to, you know, get back in and make any changes. And what I mean by that is just leave an open area that you can get down into the waterfall with a ladder. So it only has to be like one tile, just anywhere that you can put your ladder down and get down into the waterfall so that if you want to make changes, you can make changes from the inside instead of having to come in from the outside of the terraformed area and like eat into the cliff and like you'll have to like redo everything. It's just a lot easier, trust me, if you leave yourself a little sneaky way to get down into the waterfall from the top. And then I guess my last tip for making a sunken waterfall is start from the bottom. And I guess this kind of makes sense, but I actually didn't do this when I was working on this waterfall. I started from the top. I built the cliffs above it before I built the sunken area below it. And I wouldn't recommend that because I had to kind of like retroactively go back and like fix the cliffs because the cliffs were like getting in the way of the waterfall that I was trying to build. I don't know if that fully makes sense, but just trust me, <laughs> when you're building a sunken waterfall, the first thing you wanna do is clear the deck, like get a big terraformed like cliff of land, then eat into the cliff and cut out that sunken area. And then if you want waterfalls, after you've cut out the sunken area, build the cliff around the sunken area. I promise it will make everything easier. If you're interested in like a full sunken waterfall tutorial, maybe I can do that. Let me know in the comments because I've done a couple of them and I really like how they look. So I would definitely be interested in making a whole video on that if people are interested. So yeah, let me know. We are nearing the end of part one of the build. I am working on the last couple of houses over on the far left side of my island. The house in front is going to be Henry's house. And then I've got this little sandy flowery path that leads all the way back to Murphy's house. Murphy is my grumpy old cranky man. So I gave him a little house all the way back in the back of the neighborhood so he's a little bit secluded so he can do his little you know old man stuff whatever he does <laughs> i'm obsessed with this sandy flowery path so i will leave the creator code down in the comments if you would like to use it it's a really versatile path because it has a lot of different tiles i guess i don't know it's got a lot of different like pattern codes so you can do a whole lot of different designs because you know they've got like the left and the right and the middle and and up and down and blah, blah, blah. It's just a very creative and very lovely code and I've been using it all over my island. So if you'd like to use it, that code is down 
in the description with all of the other paths that I use, like that boardwalk path that I'm obsessed with and any of the other paths that I use that I just can't remember off the top of my head right now. <laughs> so the last thing that I built in this area was a little mini campsite. That bridge that I put in is going to cross over the river to that like bricked out area of path that I set down. That's where that campsite is going to be. And I built that area as a place to watch the stars if they're shooting stars or watch the fireworks during the summer or just, you know, a little hangout chill area. And it's right in front of the sunken waterfall. So I thought it was very cute. And you will see me decorating it in part two of this video series. So now I'm just going to take you on a little walkthrough of what I've done so far. You can see the sunken waterfall and the plots that I have laid out so far. I put Mary's photo there just because I had it, but Mary is no longer on my island, unfortunately. Here we've got ketchup at Freckles' houses, Freckles' houses, whatever. Then we've got this little path that leads back down to resident services and up and around we've got another bridge that will be coming in there and then this area I end up getting rid of and replacing with another bridge. <laughs> then we've got Queenie's picture but it's Blanche's house, Sally's picture but it's gonna be Daisy's house <laughs> in this little island, and then up on that hill to the right is going to be Goose's house. And that is all I've got for today. So I hope that you liked this style of video, kind of like a work in progress. I might do more of these because sometimes my builds take a really long time. <laughs> so let me know if you like this style of video in the comments. Here is what my island is looking like right now from the map. As you can see, all of the houses are still on the beach, but they will be gradually moved into their spots and you'll be able to see how that looks in the next video. So if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to see part two if you haven't subscribed already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.